So in the last subsection, we talked about hitting times, uh, hitting probabilities, and expected hitting times. Uh, but there's something a bit funny if you look at the hitting time for a state i to itself. So the hitting probability, hii, from a state to itself is, well, we're, we're already there, right? So it's 1. And similarly, the expected time from a state until we get to itself, well, we're already there, so it's 0. But those are quite boring answers, right? To say that the hitting probability of a state to itself is 1 and the time to get there is 0. What we might actually be more likely to be interested in is what's the probability we hit i again at some point in the future, but not right now. And what's the expected time to come back to the state that we're at, not counting the fact that we just happen to be here at the moment. And so if we want to do that, uh, we call those return times. And this definition is exactly the same for the hitting time, except we don't count time zero. So we don't have an already there, because we're not counting the time zero time. So the return probability here is the time that we come back again, is the probability, sorry, the return probability is the probability we return back at some time n, not n equals 0, the current time, but at some future time, n greater than or equal to 1. And similarly for mu i, the expected return time, is how long does it take for us to come back, not counting the fact that we're here at the moment. Note that if our first step is to stick at i, then that means the return probability that the return happened, and it happened in, in one time step. So I'm not saying we have to, to leave i necessarily. I'm just saying we don't count the current step we're on right now, time zero. But we're looking at whether we uh, come back at some point in the future. So again, you won't be surprised to learn how we do this. You can say it with me by now. We condition on the first step. Right, so to get the return probability to a state i, we condition on, well, where do we go on the first step? We go to some state j with probability pij, and the hit, then we want to know what's the time probability that from that j we come back to i. So that's just h j j i, a hitting time, isn't it? And similarly, for expected return time, well, the current time period is a 1 plus, of course, as always, and then condition on we where, where we go to next, with probably pij will come to some state j, and then by the Markov property we're starting all over again, and we want to know the time from that j back to i. That's a e to j i. I don't think we need to see another example. It's basically exactly the same as before. But this is just to say that when you're dealing with a state to itself, take care of whether you want the hitting probability and hitting time uh, expected hitting time, in which case you're already there and it's a bit boring but easy, whether actually you want the return, as in the probability that I come back, or the expected time until I come back the next time. Finally, just a quick word on section 8.3. I'm expecting you to read through that section for yourself. There isn't a separate video there. I say at the top of the section that uh, it's mandatory and it's examinable, but it is a bit technical, and so I suggest that if you've fallen behind Perhaps you might just want to look at the two summary theorems within the result and look back at the details at a later date. Uh, but there's no video specifically for section 8.3. I'm expecting you to read through that yourself.